So we've been talking about how parents can deal with their own negative emotions and maybe help their kids deal with negative emotions too. And so to do that, we're gonna start with our cognitive triad again. We're gonna change the way we think. In particular, we're gonna change the way we think about negative emotions. We're gonna first recognize that they're normative and also, as painful as they are, that they're valuable. Let's start with the normative part. Negative emotions are just the kind of thing that we all go through. We have this whole slate of emotions as humans, and there's some that we like, you know, maybe joy and laughter and so on, and there's some that we hate. And when we experience the ones we hate, we want to be like, that is terrible, I shouldn't be feeling this. We get guilty over the fact that we're feeling these negative emotions. But like most of human evolution and human psychology suggests that like we're supposed to feel those emotions. That's why they are there. We need to kind of push against what you might call toxic positivity, which is this idea that like we should never experience negative emotions. We should always have positive thinking. We should suppress and get rid of our negative emotions. And if we're ever experiencing negative emotions, something's wrong. I think the toxic positivity contributes to a lot of guilt in parents, but I think it also contributes to parents really beating themselves up when their kids are going through what are normative negative emotions, especially for certain age ranges of kids, like the middle schoolers and high schoolers that many of you parents are parents of. We really want the positive emotions and we try to grip onto them as much as possible, even when it's not a useful situation to feel them. There are moments when it's normative to feel frustrated, normative to feel sad, normative to feel anxious, normative to feel any host of negative things. But we're like, nope, that's wrong. I will hold on to our positive emotion. And we need to realize that like all emotions are supposed to be there, they're normal, and we need to allow not just ourselves to experience them, our kids, be happy in some sense they're experiencing these joys, but like notice that it's normative for them to feel sad or upset or all these other kinds of things. And I think this is particularly true when we're dealing with slightly older kids, slightly teenage kids. Like the biology of the teenager is one that is experiencing a whole host of emotions and some new ones. Things like shame in a way they hadn't experienced before, anxiety as they're thinking about the future in really special kinds of ways. It obviously doesn't feel good as a parent to let them go through that, but these are like normal negative emotions, including the ones that are directed at you, <laughs> especially the frustration, the anger, like all that stuff. That's like normal teenage behavior. You wouldn't have a like neurotypical teenage child if they weren't going through this. And so we have to change the way we think about these things. They don't have to be fun, but you can say, ah, this means I've raised a child that's going through the normal kinds of emotions that kids are going through, um, even, again, when it's sort of mean to you. What I like to remind parents is that kids' messy emotions are messy, but your reactions to them can make them worse. Your reactions to them can make them think, I'm not supposed to feel upset or angry, or I'm not supposed to feel scared. And then you get in a cycle where they're feeling guilt about these emotions. They're hiding them from you. And that doesn't go kind of anywhere well quickly. I like to remind parents that teenage emotions are going to be as messy as their rooms. And both of those are normative, <laughs> the messy room and the messy emotions. So we need to change the way we think about emotions. They're normal. They're supposed to be there. But also, they're really valuable, with both your kids and especially yours. What do I mean by this? Our emotions are there for a purpose. They're there to tell us something. I think we need to remember that when we have negative experiences in terms of our evolution, they're there for a purpose, right? You put your hand on this hot stove, it's going to hurt. You're gonna experience a negative sensation. But that negative sensation is there to do something really good, which is to say, take your damn hand off the stove quickly, right? Our negative emotions are the same thing. They're giving us useful information about what we're supposed to do. I like to rethink them as the sort of dashboard light on our car, right? Which are also inconvenient, right? Like if your tire light goes on when you're at the beginning of a big trip or your gas light goes on, you're like, oh, this is a pain in the butt. But if you don't listen to that information, it's going to get worse. Your negative emotions work just like that. They are this signal that like you need to do something, right? Your loneliness is a signal that you need to probably get some social connection. Your sense of anxiety and fear is that you need to either regulate or there's something there that you need to pay attention to. Your sense of anger is that there's something out of disproportion and you might need to take a break or do something else. Biggest one for parents, your sense of overwhelm is telling you that you need to take something off your plate. These are normal alert lights that if we don't listen to them, bad consequences will happen. And so these things are really valuable if we can kind of pay attention to them. This is my colleague, Mark Brackett at, at Yale, who does a lot of work on emotional intelligence. And I love his quote here. Feelings are like news reports from inside our psyche, sending messages about what's going on inside this unique person that is us in response to whatever internal or external events we're experiencing. He goes on to say, we need to access that information and then figure out what it's telling us. That way we can make the most informed decisions. And even with your tire light, it could go on and you could be like, 
tire lights on. I can't do that right now, but I'm going to put it in my schedule to deal with that later. And sometimes our negative emotions work like that too. We, we need to pay attention to them to decide how to fix it. So that's how we need to think differently. We need to recognize that our emotions are normative and they're valuable and they're giving us interesting information.